thank you all so much for being here um, and, and enjoying the special day with us. This is, um, I think it's my favorite event of, of the year, like uh, event event. Every day with students is, is a great event. I'm supposed to say that because my boss, the superintendent's in the back of the room. So uh, every day with students is, is a great day, but it is. Um, but, but this event is truly an honor and, and we haven't done this. Um, I guess this is the first time we've done it in almost, almost three years. Uh, and so this, this class was supposed to have done, we were supposed to be honoring you last year. And so many of you got a phone call that said, hey, we're ready for you in September of 21. And then we hit the brakes. So uh, as that ugly disease raised its ugly head again, but we're glad, so glad that we can honor you uh, here in the class of 2022. So thank you all for being here. My name is John Wright and I'm the Community Relations Director for Hardin County Schools. And on behalf of the students and faculty and staff, of our district, I'd like to welcome you uh, to our Distinguished Alumni Luncheon. We welcome you to this uh, wonderful place. It's called the Hardin County Schools Early College and Career Center. And um, EC3 is was what we call it. Its roots lay in a collaborative partnership between Hardin County Schools, Western Kentucky University, the Central Kentucky Community Foundation, and Elizabethtown Community and Technical College. It's been called the most dynamic educational partnership ever forged in the Commonwealth. This center fulfills several roles. Um, high school students in the Hardin County Schools are using the, this center to take courses in um, health science, engineering, automotive technology, welding, information technology, culinary arts, multimedia production, construction management, and air and space. And we actually, actually kind of ran out of room here, and so there's a criminal justice pathway that's housed in an extra room at John Harden. And in fact, uh, our Board of Education is considering uh, actually expanding this uh, because um, there is some growth. Uh, if you all haven't heard that uh, in our, our area, there is some growth that's coming. And so we are actually considering expanding. And um, so where we're standing uh, in a couple of years, we may, may not be able to stand here. So uh, it's good, it's good uh, to be here while we can. But hundreds of students have also graduated uh, from, our, um, from our high schools with their associate's degree because uh, they also use this facility as a conduit to ECTC to take college courses that will earn them high school and college credit. So it's a wonderful program. Uh, my daughter is in it. I think several, I see several parents in the room whose daughter, whose sons or daughters have taken advantage of that. And so uh, it's, a, it's a great program. If you'd like to stick around after the luncheon, we'll certainly give you a tour and uh, you can see how the classroom has changed, honorees, uh, since you were in it so, so long ago. Or not, not too, that too long ago, right, Becky? Just, just yesterday, right? <laughs> I will say that Becky Yates probably has the largest crowd in distinguished alumni history, and that's good. That's a good thing. So uh, good to tell you uh, how loved you are, Becky. But uh, we'd like to welcome some special guests here today. There are members of our Board of Education. Our chair, Mr. Charlie Wise, is, is back there. Uh, Mr. Ben Sego, who is a member of our board, Ms. Don Johnson, who is our vice chair, Mr. Mark Casey, who is a former member and will soon be joining our board again uh, in, in January. Uh, some high school principals are here. I see Mr. Tim Isaacs uh, is here, uh, gradu is a graduate of East Harden High School. He's a, a distinguished alum and is also the principal at Central Harden uh, High School. Um, so we would like to thank any, any other distinguished alums uh, who have, we've honored as distinguished alumni that are in the room. Please, please stand. I know I see two back there, three. Uh, Mark is here, four. So give, let's give them a hand, please. Yes, and Ms. McAfee, yes. Yes, so thank you all so much. Brother Bell, would you like to start your journey up here? You want me to bring the mic to you? Oh, you can just do it from right there. Ms. Uh, Brother Mike Bell will pray for us before we, before we eat. Heavenly Father, thank you for such a beautiful day. But Father, thank you for such a heartwarming day. A day that we pause to remember those pillars that we climbed and caused us to climb to greater heights. The present distinguished alumnus with us have made our communities and their communities much better because of their influence and their heart to make the world better. We want to thank you for the character of those that are being inducted today. They are an inspiration. But Father, I want to thank you also for the Hardin County Schools and the education system that we have in our community. 
It's one of those things that we take for granted that it's there and it goes on. But by the hard work of the Board of Education and the, the staff, the superintendent, and all those that make this school system a distinguished system, they are truly helping children succeed. So we ask you to bless our meal, bless our minds that we remember, and truly, Father, may this day inspire us to be a better neighbor, a better light shining for this community. In our Lord's name, we praise you and thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bell. The culinary arts students here at the Early College and Career Center will be serving you lunch today. You already have a salad in front of you, and they will be bringing you uh, your main course uh, later uh, as well. Uh, Chef Linda Lowe, who you see, Chef Roger Ramsey is somewhere back there, but most of all, our students have worked really, really hard on this lunch today, and you will enjoy it, I promise. It'll be very, very good. Uh, I'd like to introduce Chef Roger Ramsey in the back of the room. He and his team did a marvelous job. Please show them how much you appreciate them. You know, we, we asked Chef Ramsey, look, this is, this is an event in mid-September, late September. Will your students be ready? You know, they've just been in school a little bit more than a month. And he gave me this look like, well, yeah. So. <laughs> I had a pretty solid bunch of kids. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Uh, folks, we appreciate you. I would love to do this for you. Uh, if you're interested about the cost of your meal, where that money goes, the pathway is self-sustaining through our catering operation. So when we get to do this stuff for nice folks like y'all, then we get to bring in groceries for ourselves. Uh, we greatly appreciate y'all on this. Thank you, Chef. Appreciate you. We want to honor our... Uh, we want our honorees today to know how much that we truly appreciate them being here. Uh, we are grateful that, that our families, you and your families, uh, could be here today. So we'll meet our honorees shortly, but let's just take a minute and give a round of applause to our honorees for their dedication uh, to our schools and uh, district for their high, highly regarded accomplishments. Let's give everybody a hand. For them. <laughs> you can see, as you, you'll be able to tell, we have some, some highly regarded uh, honorees that, that um, we'll be honoring. I'd like to bring up our board chair, Mr. Charlie Wise. Uh, Mrs. Morgan had to step away, but Mr. Wise is going to help us give out uh, awards today. So uh, when uh, I read a little bit about you or, you, or your uh, family member, uh, please come up and get your plaque from Mr. Wise, and we'll take a quick picture. And uh, if you'd like to say a few words, we'll, we'll certainly uh, let you do that. So we're looking forward to hearing from you. Our first honoree going in alphabetical order is Mrs. Becky Aitz. She's our first honoree. Um, Mrs. Aitz is a 1979 North Harden High School graduate. Four years later, she was hired as a part-time teller at what was then known as the Fort Knox Federal Credit Union. When she retired from that same institution in 2021, now known as a bound credit union, she was the executive vice president. She was instrumental in a $1.85 billion increase in assets over that span of time. When she began her career with a bound credit union, it had $39 million in loans. Mrs. Aitz's work was critical in expanding the loan portfolio to $1.3 billion through her efforts in implementing small business lending programs and mortgage lending programs. As she moved from serving members on the front line to leading the organization, she never lost sight um, that, that, uh, of, the, um, of the customers there at the credit union, the members of the credit union. A bound credit union uh, president, Ray Springsteen, said that all of her outstanding accomplishments and innovations were driven by her desire to serve members and strengthen our communities. From her start uh, at the credit union, she balanced a career, college classes, and raised a young family and found ways to continue serving members in the community. Mrs. Aitz was instrumental in financial education. She worked with school districts, including ours, to provide systems and training teachers needed and developed new partnerships to help reach underserved populations and launch uh, innovative new programs with local colleges to help thousands of young adults build a financial future. And that program that she worked on and created is still uh, truly in play in, in Hardin County schools. There are lots of elementary, middle, and high school students that know how to balance a checkbook because of Mrs. Aitz's work. During her tenure at a bound credit union, Mrs. Aitz never stopped continuing her education and focusing on uh, professional development. 
After she was hired as a part-time teller, she completed her associate's degree, her bachelor's degree, and her master's degree. Please help me welcome Ms. Becky Aids. We appreciate you. I really wasn't prepared with any remarks, but um, I do um, appreciate this so much. Uh, I've come such a long way, and having just retired in October, it's all, you know, coming flooding back. Everyone keeps asking me, you know, do you miss working? Are, are you happy with um, that you retired? And while I'm, you know, really uh, excited to be retired, you know, this just makes me realize how much I, you know, I do truly miss working with all my friends at Abound and, um, you know, just the, making all the, uh, the memories and doing all the work that we do in the community. And I'm just glad to see it going forth. Um, you know, I know there's a lot more uh, to come in the financial education realm with Abound and Hardin County Schools and some of the other school districts. So um, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I appreciate this more than you know. And um, it's just, it's just an honor to be a member of this class. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Becky. We went formal. Her plaque says Rebecca, but uh, everybody, everybody knows who Becky is. Becky. So this, um, our next honorees, um, in my memory, and I looked over the records, we have never inducted or honored a couple at the same time, but we felt that this was the right thing to do because our next honorees have worked so hard together uh, to, build, to build their legacy. And uh, our next honorees are Mr. and Mrs. Burton Langley. They're the first couple that we've ever honored simultaneously with the Distinguished Alumni Award. Mr. Langley graduated from Linville High School in 1948. Mrs. Langley did the same four years later in 1952. This wonderful couple accomplished a great deal in their life together. We have another Linvale alum, Ms. Barbara Prophet, is in the back of the room. Yeah, yeah that's right. Well, You're, I was gonna say warriors, yeah. <laughs> warriors, that's right. But they founded, Ms. the Langleys founded and ran successful local businesses such as Langley Contracting, Kentucky Guardrail, Kentucky Galvanizing, and the Bank of Elizabethtown, just to name a few. They also developed the area in and around Hardin County's present day Pine Valley. Uh, area into prime real estate and eventually a golf course. The Langley's passion for education motivated them to donate the land to Hardin County Schools that formerly housed G.C. Burkhead Elementary School, a place where generations of successful HCS alumni started their journey to become today's leaders. That building now houses our College View campus. Mr. Langley helped develop Hardin County's rural water system and began serving as a commissioner in 1967. He retired in 1991 when he and Mrs. Langley retired to Florida. While there, the couple developed and owned the Kissimmee Bay Country Club and seven other golf courses in Florida. They owned the country's largest private golf museum, which they donated to Rotary International. That speaks of their stewardship. The Langleys established the Barbara and Burton Langley Family Foundation. That foundation has contributed to the restoration of rural cemeteries, veteran projects, the Oneida Baptist Institute, and has assisted many individuals attempting to earn their GEDs. The Langley Family Foundation awards a $1,000 scholarship to a high school senior living in Hardin County Water District Number 2 service area each year. That foundation has distributed more than $250,000 to our community. Uh, please help me welcome Mr. and Mrs. Langley's daughter, Ms. Teresa Mullins, to the podium. Thank you, Ms. Mullins. Thank you, Ms. Mullins, for being here, representing your parents. Mr. George McAfee is a member of the 1945 graduating class of the former Glendale High School. After graduating from Center College in 1949, he joined the United States Civil Service and became a radar instructor at Kessler Air Force Base in Biloxi, Mississippi. He was drafted into the United States Army in 1952 and was a radar instructor at Aberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland. He was discharged from the Army in 1954 and joined Westinghouse Electric Corporation's Defense Center in Baltimore. Mr. McAfee started his 33-year career at Westinghouse designing and developing analog computer systems for radars 
that were housed in airborne radars and missile systems. Many of the systems he designed and developed were for special access programs. Therefore, information about them is classified and not for attribution. His specialty was designing and developing feedback control systems for radars used in the airborne warning and control systems and the F-16 fighter jet. He also designed and developed the underwater launch computer for elevation and range for the Polaris missile system. The system calculated the height and troughs of sea waves to determine when it was safe to launch a missile. Mr. McAfee held many positions of responsibility throughout his career, and he retired as manager of the Feedback and Control Systems Department. He graduated from Center College with his bachelor's degree in physics. In 1967, he earned his master's degree in electrical engineering from the Johns Hopkins University, and he was a registered professional engineer in the state of Maryland. His widow is 2016 HCS Distinguished Alumni Honoree, Ms. Naoma Jones McAfee, and she graduated from Glendale High School in 1951. Please help me welcome her to the podium today. Thank you, Ms. Wright. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to thank the other honorees uh, of Hardin County. And just let you know, you're not getting off as easy to, with me as you did with the last person. <laughs> <laughs> George McAfee graduated from Glendale High School 77 years ago. I think there are only three people in this room who were born when George graduated. My sister, Brother Mike Bell, or I may have aged him, <laughs> and myself. Anyway, George was a, you could call him a Renaissance man. There was nothing that he wasn't interested in, he couldn't learn, and, and was delighted to take uh, any puzzle was something that he wanted to solve. He also was a person who never met a stranger. And he had a, a trait that many people should develop. If you ever heard Winston Churchill's statement about tact, Churchill said tact was the ability to, to tell somebody to go to hell and make them enjoy the journey while they were going. <laughs> that was George McAfee. <laughs> he also had a wicked sense of humor. As an illustration, in high school, I guess maybe only one person here remembers J.M., well, Mike Bell, <laughs> J.M. F. Hayes. Mr. Hayes used to come into a study hall and he'd look around the room and he'd pick on so poor some unsuspected person to recite some poetry. Well, there was the day when he called on George McAfee. Well, George thought poetry was great you memorized it for class and you immediately forgot it. So his poetry was, I never saw a purple cow, I never hoped to see one. But I tell you anyhow, I'd rather see than be one. <laughs> I don't think Mr. Hayes ever asked anybody else to recite <laughs> <laughs> He was also a person who enjoyed helping people. As an example, I don't know how many of you may know Bethany Stiles Shera. She was assigned the problem of writing a paper about Glendale. She called George. George worked maybe for three or four hours, put the information together, sent it back to her and said, go talk to the Reverend Mike Bell. <laughs> now, that must have been a good collaboration for Bethany got an A+. Plus. And George always wanted to know how much of that A-plus he should have shared. <laughs> Another example of that is where, is, where is James Sisk? Most of you, I think, know. Well, he t teaches history at Hardin County, or Hardin Central. George gave him probably the only thing that none of you have ever seen which was an invitation to the impeachment of Andrew Johnson. Now, I think during Clinton's impeachment, he may have taken that to school to show him. I don't know whether he had the nerve to do it during Trump's. 
<laughs> but that was just George. Anybody who needed help, he was always there to help them. So I'm honored to accept this for him. And I think he's probably up there saying, what's she going to do next? <laughs> Thank you, Ms. McAfee. When, uh, Mr. McAfee is certainly deserving of, of, these, uh, of this award, and, and we probably should have um, honored him um, before now, but when Mrs. McAfee was here in, in uh, 2016, that's, you know, when we saw the nominee for Mr. McAfee, well, he's going in because we gotta bring Mrs. McAfee back, so. <laughs> so, but, but certainly deserving. Both, both, both she and, and Mr. McAfee are certainly deserving of their uh, uh, the honor of distinguished alumni. Our last honoree today is Lieutenant Colonel Tucker McEwen. He is a 1999 graduate of Central Hardin High School. He's a senior C-32A uh, evaluator pilot in the United States Air Force's 89th Airlift Wing of, uh, at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland. His primary duties include planning and executing missions and transporting the Vice President of the United States under the call sign Air Force Two, as well as the First Lady, Secretary of State, and other senior government officials. He's not here today, you can tell why. <laughs> Prior to being selected as an Air Force pilot, Lieutenant Colonel McEwen was assigned to fly the C-130 Hercules aircraft. During this time, he amassed over 3,500 flight hours, including 800 combat hours during four tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. He delivered tens of thousands of tons of cargo and personnel in support of Operations Iraqi and Enduring Freedom, over 30 combat airdrops to res resupply troops at remote outposts in the mountains of, of Afghanistan, and during an airdrop to resupply a uh, U.S. Army forward operating base in Karangal Valley in 2006, his aircraft evaded a tense uh, enemy surface to air fire. Lieutenant Colonel McEwen and his crew were awarded the Air Force Combat Action Medal for this mission. He has been awarded the Humanitarian Service Medal for his, his participation in relief operations in the aftermath of the Haiti earthquake in 2010 and Cyclone Nargis in Burma in 2008. In 2019, he completed a fifth combat deployment to Afghanistan as a Director of Operations for the 430th Expeditionary Expeditionary Electronic Combat Squadron. His duties included directing combat operations for 23 squadron personnel and the squadron's four aircraft. He flew 600 combat hours and provided communications range extension and data link bridging for air and ground forces. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, McEwen received his commission through the U.S. Air Force ROTC Detachment 290 at the University of Kentucky in 2003. He graduated cum laude with the Bachelor of Science degree in physics from Georgetown College and was named the outstanding physics major in his class of 20, uh, 20, 2003. During his time at Georgetown, he was a wingback also for the Georgetown College football team that won the NAIA National Championship in 2001 and 2002. As you can imagine, Lieutenant uh, Colonel McEwen could not be here today uh, to accept the, the award, but here to accept that on his behalf are his parents, Ms. Kevin and Susan McEwen. Thank you all for being here. Please come forward. Tucker couldn't be here because he has he's just returned, and I brought this up, from Israel in Eastern Europe where he took the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. They did return two days earlier, so maybe he could have been here. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say thank you for selecting me to be a member of this esteemed group. It's an honor to represent Hardin County and more specifically the Hardin County public school system. My mother was a librarian for 40 years and the joy of teaching and, and love of watching students develop that I personally saw in her was shared by each of the dozens of teachers I had in my years at Upton Elementary, Eastern Harden, East Harden Middle School, and Central Harden High School. The education that I received from these amazing teachers was second to none, and they fully prepared me to further my studies at Georgetown College and for my career as an officer in the U.S. Air Force. But beyond just learning, reading, and writing, and arithmetic, I have fond memories of lessons 
about the history of the Commonwealth of Kentucky and how to be a good citizen of the Commonwealth and our nation. My teachers instilled in me a strong sense of pride at being a Kentuckian, and I've always tried to be a good ambassador to the state wherever I go. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the impact of playing baseball and football at East Harden and Central Harden had on my development as well. The dedication of coaches like Mike Lewis, Chris Reed, Keith Graham, Chris Bauer, Mark Martin, Tim Isaacs, Todd Hayden, and countless others was so valuable for teaching me how to work hard to be a good teammate and how to win and lose. Now that my own daughter is participating in middle school sports, I have even greater respect for the extra hours coaches put in after hours developing the mental and physical fitness of these young athletes. I'd like to close by giving my heartfelt thanks to all the teachers that personally mentored and educated me growing up. You truly helped me make me who I am today. And to all current teachers, faculty, and staff of Hardin County Public Schools, thank you for all you do to do each and every day to shape the next generation of young Kentuckians. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McEwen. We appreciate you. Appreciate you sharing. All right. Are we? Are we you good, Mrs. Morgan? Okay. All right. Well, um, she had to step away, but now she's back. So we'd like to. Um, she does that from time to time. Uh, we'd like to bring up our superintendent, Mrs. Terry Morgan, for some closing remarks. Thank you, Ms. Morgan. What we know is school doesn't stop uh, <laughs> during any of the events, so I appreciate your all's patience. John loves when I go off script, but uh, <laughs> while we have a collective audience here today, uh, in, when Miss McAfee, if you want to go back and check out on YouTube that Gina takes care of, in 2016 when she was inducted into, uh, I call it the Hall of Fame, uh, distinguished alumni, she gave a very moving speech, and I share that with our Girls Incorporated. Each year we have a Girls Incorporated meeting uh, that Abound supports, and it's trying to encourage girls to go into fields that women don't normally go into. And so I share the first couple of minutes of her speech where uh, she actually had to sign her initials so they would not recognize that she was a woman because women were not allowed to be engineers. I also like the part that you shared that you had to get permission to go into that field. And uh, the girls are all like, no, that's just wrong. And I'm like, yes, we've come a long way. So thank you for that. We, I do continue to share that uh, with them each year. But it is a privilege to be here today. As you heard all the biographies and autobiographies from some of our uh, inductees today, you realize the power that schools have, and especially Hardin County schools have had on these individuals, uh, all the way back to Linville, to East Hardin, now uh, Central Hardin, North Hardin, and John Hardin. Uh, it is quite amazing to see what our school systems have developed and what individuals those uh, people have developed into. So thank you for being here today. Uh, this is truly one of my favorite days, and what I do is look forward to 20 years when some of the students that I worked with and have moved forward to see how we can bring those students back that I will recognize each of their faces to go, wow, you made it, you did great things. Uh, we teach our students to learn about the grade eight standards. Uh, standard number three is about <coughs> academic performance. Uh, and they take that, what you all have done is taken that out of the classroom and demonstrated when you take that academic performance, what differences you can make in the lives of others and what a difference you've made for your family. Uh, this group has gone above and beyond the call of duty, uh, bettering those around them, sacrificing their own thoughts, interests, and they bring honor to the lives of the people around them. This group has accomplished this because of motivation and persistence, which is also part of the great eight standards. 
Uh, it doesn't matter what the job title is, this year's honorees have emerged and become distinguished alums because of their determination and drive. Uh, these characteristics are wonderful examples that we continue to use with our students in classes each and every day. Uh, before we depart, I do want to thank our food service uh, for the meal that they have provided for us today. Uh, uh, yes, I, I believe they are changing out students and bringing other students in right now or doing cleanup, but we greatly appreciate that. Um, and then also just really want to appreciate the guests and the family members who are uh, with your uh, distinguished alumni. Uh, I think you all might need a bell. Maybe we could change it to a bell and you all could start ringing that to make sure they serve you in the way you deserve from this point forward. Uh, the other thing I want to share is my mother always shared birds of a feather flock together and that's why she didn't let us flock with certain people. Uh, but I want you to know that many of you uh, know colleagues that you graduated with who deserve to be a distinguished alumni. So I ask that you take the opportunity before you leave today to share with Mr. Wright some of those names because when we see people uh, waiting until they're 70, 80 years old to be in this, we would like to do it much sooner uh, so that more of their family could potentially uh, join them on this day. So please take the opportunity to share those names with Mr. Wright. We do ask that you stay around. You have all the time that you want to share. Uh, give hugs and we'll take some pictures up here afterwards. But again, thank you all so much for being here and congratulations to our distinguished alumni. So like Ms. Morgan, like Ms. Morgan said, you're uh, free to stay, you're free to leave if you'd like, but we just do ask that our honorees come forward. We're gonna take a picture, we'll move these flags set up a few chair, a couple chairs, and we're going to take a group picture. So thank you all for coming today. We appreciate you all.